Hey y'all, this is Clay from Steezy, and you know what we do a lot here? Film dance video. We have created over 400 plus online dance classes for www.steezy.co, and for each of these classes, we're required to film and edit promotional assets, ads, and of course, dance videos. So whether you're usually in front of the camera or behind it, these awesome tips will bring your dance videos from level one to five, six, seven, eight, but not 10. That's crazy. We're gonna be going through these tips in the order of a production. So from pre-production to actually filming to editing. Also, we'll be throwing in some extremely helpful technical tips at the end. Let's get it. Tip number one, make the most of your location. Let's face it, the majority of dancers aren't rolling in piles of money, or even more so, aren't saving enough to afford the videos that they wanna make. And that means we can't always afford to book that $3,000 an hour, five hour minimum location on Peer Space or Splicer. Nani? And that's okay. Part of the fun of creating videos is the problem solving process. So let's pretend you have to go the low budget route. What do you do? Say for instance, you know you're filming in a dance studio and the background is plain and black. Being that there are only three dancers, we don't want them to look lonely in their environment. We need to give it life, energy, movement. This could have been done by adding extras, moving lights, or just using what's around the area. I knew there were some big fans in the corner of the room, so I threw some small lights behind them, used my Party City fog machine I bought three years ago, and that was my new set for Trevor Takamoto's video to crush. Or look for depth in your environment. Fog, whether artificial or natural, diffuses and spreads light and can provide a rich background for your dancers. And dancers love to wear black, so we have to make sure that they don't disappear into the background. If you learn how to make the best use of your zero budget environments, imagine what you can do when you have the opportunity to use a big budget location. In the meantime, focus more on accent lighting, environmental textures, colors, and just more creative ways to use your environments that you have in mind. Just remember that filming in front of a cool wall does not make your dance video good but how you use your environment to honor the dance is what makes it good. Tip number two, learn the choreo yourself and communicate with the dancers. I could not stress this enough. Be a proactive videographer. You should almost never show up to a set and film a dance that you've never seen before. If you're able to, get a video of the choreography before the day of the shoot, or show up to a rehearsal of theirs. You should also schedule time to run through the dance and the shots with your dancers on the day of the shoot. Taking time to analyze their movements helps you pick out key moments that you want to highlight in the video. Watch this shot that I filmed for Lao Benigas East Coast remix. I learned the choreography from watching rehearsal videos and that allowed me to actually move completely in sync with the dancers. In the original choreography, the dancers jog in place. I felt it would be much more effective to have it travel and to time the extras in the background to do the exact same motion to make it a super cool moment. These adjustments were only possible because I spent a good amount of time in pre-production communicating with Lyle and of course, learning the choreography. Tip number three, it never hurts to get a clean full coverage shot. When you're filming, get a full body safety shot, whether it's wide angle or super compressed. Get a shot that doesn't cut off any arms, legs, tentacles, heads, whatever it is, yada yada yada. Trust me, you'll thank yourself later for getting that shot, whether you use it in the final edit or just as a reference for musicality. Tip number four, high angle shots show formations. Low angle shots show power or double chins. This is a generally well-known idea. Psychologically, low angle shots make the subject seem more powerful and prominent. This is a really effective angle to use for accentuating moments in a dance. High angle shots could have the opposite effect and make the subject seem inferior or less powerful, but in dance, we often use blocking and formations to guide and please the viewer's eyes from all angles. The high angle allows us to see these formations and patterns in their entirety, which is an essential part of a choreography. You'll notice that freestyle videos are rarely filmed from a high angle because there aren't really any formations to show. Tip number five, when editing, cut on actions, especially big motions. When making dance videos, I always say, honor the dance. But how do you dishonor the dance? Doing something like this. What the fuck, fo? I sleep with the gun. This shit don't smell. What the fuck, yeah? Uh. Why, why did you cut it like that? If you cut too much during extremely quick and small movements, you'll often leave the viewers confused and honestly, Pissed off that you took a big old dump on that beautiful piece of art that you're supposed to edit. So do your best to cut on big motions. Like this. And above hose, that is still my favorite love quote. Nothing nice, yeah. Vegas in my eyes. 
Jesus Christ, yeah. This is a really common technique used in cinema because it takes about two to three frames for the human eye to process any information following a cut. And now it's time for some technical quick tips. High shutter speed. If you are shooting around 24 frames per second, using a shutter speed that's around 1 over 100 or 1 1 20th of a second will make your dancer's movements look faster, cleaner, and more powerful. This is because there's less motion blur. I like to call this good choppy. Be careful to not abuse this. This can be really disorienting to a viewer's eyes, especially if the shot is not stabilized. The final tip. Maintain consistent distance from the dancers to keep them in focus. Unless you have a follow focus or extremely steady hand, you don't really have a way to refocus the lens when the dancers are moving forward and back. So if you can, shoot at a more narrow aperture and maintain a consistent distance from the dancers so that they don't go out of focus. And that is it, y'all. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope these tips help you become a more thoughtful dance video creator who can honor the dances with purposeful production choices. And every video needs a purpose. Our purpose for filming these videos is to show you what you can learn on CZ Studio. So make sure you sign up to www.cz.co to learn these awesome dances. Film well, Tinkerbell.